Bang! Neves Knives! I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara is playing our video games, and today we're checking out the Custom Knife Factory Recenti Snafu 2.0. I did review the, the, the actual custom uh, Peter Recenti Snafu, but this is the one done by Custom Knife Factory, which they are very, very similar. Um, there's not too many knives out there that are that similar to the actual custom. Now, this knife was sent to me by the Shadow Man, the man who stays in the shadows, and we can't thank him enough for being so awesome to our channel. And I did sharpen this for him because, and I wasn't gonna, because it still had a beautiful factory edge, but it had a little nick in it, in the edge, that I just could not hone out. So, I wound up putting a beautiful mirror polished edge on it. I was going to put a toothy edge on it because usually I like toothy edges, uh, lower grit edges more than uh, mirror polished edges. But being the knife that this is, I just knew it would look so good with a beautiful mirror edge. So, that's what I did. I did keep it at the same angle that the factory had it at, which was 20 degrees. And... So it's not as toothy as it would be if I would have kept it as, at a lower grit. But it still has, you know, a good enough bite. It's very sharp. But, yeah, like I said, I like lower grits more because they have so much bite when you touch them. And this one still has, you know, bite, but not like it would if it was a lower grit. But it does cut very good. I mean, it's obviously a very sharp edge still. Another thing, though, is... If I would have lowered the, the angle back, I think, I, I almost wish I would have. Let me just say that. I almost wish I would have lowered the angle just a little bit because I kept it at the factory angle because, you know, it's not my knife and, you know, I don't know exactly how, how he's going to use his knife and I didn't want to go off. I'm already putting a mirrored edge on there. I don't want to go off and change the angles. So, and I don't know, you know, some people don't like big bevels. But I think it would have a heck of a lot more bite behind, you know, like touching it if it was laid back a little bit farther. Now, don't get me wrong. This, you know, still has a good amount of bite. Just not like it would if it was laid back a little bit farther. It's 17 degrees. Let's get into this knife. So the overall length is 8 and 7 eighths. Just under 9 inches with a 3 and 7 eighths inch blade. Just under 4 inch blade. Let's do some quick size comparisons. Here is the Hinder XM24. Which is very, very close. Here is the Hinder XM18. Which is a little bit smaller. So, it's kind of in between those two. And then here is the rat one, which is just a tiny, tiny bit shorter than the custom knife factory. And then we'll do one more. Here is the cold steel code four. I think a lot of people know this knife by now, which they're pretty similar, but the code four is barely shorter. It's almost unnoticeable. All right. I think that's uh, pretty good. It's a big knife. <laughs> it is a big knife. Um, Not like big, like in heavy weight, thick or anything like that. I mean long. It's a long knife, which I like this size. I love this size knife. You can really get a lot of great work done with it. Custom Knife Factory now. There's their logo. Now they do a lot of knives for for i guess you could say like the bigger designers the more known designers designers that make custom knives that people just don't have enough money for so you know custom knife factory makes their knives and then people are able to get them at a more reasonable price but they do such an incredible job they do a really really good job I mean, this is so close to the actual custom that 
if I didn't know any better, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference, to be honest. Like, it's just that close. You can see this one's numbered. And this is M390 Titanium Damascus Pivot Collar. And it is an integral. So an integral means this whole handle is made out of one piece of titanium. And they had to mill out everything out of this out of one block of titanium which is pretty hard to do um even for machinery or cnc machines you know getting that right you only get one shot and if you mess up it you know you're gonna have to use that titanium for something else because you're gonna have to restart so when you see the jimping that's cut into the same piece the milling I'm not trying to tell you everything you can see on the knife, but um, this is the lock bar insert, which makes it where it's steel on steel contact instead of um, titanium on steel contact. So this is a beautifully, beautiful hollow ground blade that gets down to a nice thinness. This one's about 20 thousandths behind the edge. Nice blade stock thickness. Very strong, durable blade. I do not remember what the custom one was behind the edge, but I do think it was thinner than this one. Now, I forget exactly what it was. If you really want to know, you can go watch that video. But it's still, you know, very, very similar in, you know, just the look, the size, the feel, the fit, the finish. This choil, just like on the custom one, you know, it's not really a finger choil, it's more of a sharpening choil. You can get one nub in there, you know, if you really want to get some close contact, but you're not getting any more than that. I mean, you can, for push cuts, you can go over the top of the flipper tab like this and do cuts, but it has a beautiful clip point, um, it's not really a buoy, but it kind of is kind of a clip point buoy style. Yeah, I'll call it a clip point buoy. Uh, some people might call it a drop point. It's got a beautiful flat area here for the push cuts, beautiful belly for slicing. And, you know, it, the tip is a little high, but you can still get to it. Being a big knife, you're going to have to do a lot of lift to really get to it, but you can. You can get to it. Um, the blade is done so good. Now, this is bead blasted right here. Let's see if I can get to really come up on camera. So, this is a bead blast, and then the flats right here are like a hand rub satin. And then the top of the swedge is also a bead blast. Very uh, grippy uh, jimping. It's really spread apart. They're not really tight like a lot of jimping is. A lot of jimping tends to be a little closer. Um, let me find some really quick. Like uh, here. You see how this jimping is really close on this. And then this is really far apart. So it definitely gives you good traction though. You're going to get a lot of great sharpenings out of this before it's before it gets really thick oh no this is a flat ground blade no it's a hollow now this isn't the deepest hollow ground blade i don't i still i kind of feel like the the custom was a little deeper hollow but it's still a hollow ground blade nice strong tip the handles very very comfortable it's a little thin in this area for the thickness, but it, it still works really good in the hand. It's not like up, it's, it definitely wouldn't go in the bat or nothing. This is nice and grippy back here. Let's get to the action. So it has, oh, not a light detent because you can hear it. It's still got a nice clicky detent. Decent sized flipper tab that's nice and comfortable. Kind of gives you a spot right here. And then you see the thumb studs second as the the stop pen right there on the ledge. I always kind of like feel like when I'm looking at ones like this that are on a peak, like it's just going to wind up breaking this off and rolling right over. But 
that's not going to happen. But yeah, the detent feels light on the flipper tab, but really it's just, it's a heavy blade, perfectly centered. But because it's such a heavy blade, it kind of feels light, but it's really not when you actually feel it. Thumb studs work great. And that's another thing is that because the detent is nice and tuned the way it is, you get great action from the thumb studs slash stop pins and the flipper tab. They both work great. You can do the push button or the light switch. Both of them work really good. You can thumb flick it. You can middle finger flick off of the thumb studs. And you even have this uh, groove right here, the fuller, to do reverse flex. The action on this thing is incredible. You really have great action. And look at this drop. I mean, it's not drop shutty. It's false shut action. 100%. The lock bar is very easy to get to, even though it's kind of straight across there. The chamfered right here, still very easy to get to. You're always past the detent. The detent ball is perfectly set where it's like right before it's going to hit your finger. So if you do like to unlock the lock bar and let it hit your finger and let it drop, you got it really nice. So love, love, love this knife. Let's talk about some bad things. This clip. I like the clip better than the custom one. I'll say that. The one on the custom one was a little weak. Um, it had like a stone finish. It just was weak. This one, it, it's tight enough. It goes in the pocket great. But look at on the way out. Look at the how it's like flat. Like if I was going to pull it out. You know, let me just go like this. So like in the pocket, it works great. But then when I'm pulling it out of the pocket, that the, the area where the cloth hits is flat. And it makes it where it snags it. And especially with the seam of your pants, when it's, you know, when you got a seam, it clips it on the way out and really wants to pull on it because it's flat. I wish they would have just rounded that off. Now that's easily done. If you don't mind modding your knives, you can, um, you know, put a little sandpaper right there underneath the back side of the clip. So, but in the hand and in the pocket, it still carries good. It's a big, long knife, but it carries good. And like I said, it goes in the pocket fine. It's just on the way out. It wants to kind of snag a little bit on the seam of the pocket. Not that big of a deal. The only hardware you really have is these two T6s right here. And then the lock bar insert and the pivot. So the pivot is nice, big hardware, but it's T6s back here. Not that big of a deal being T6s on the pocket clip because you don't, you don't really have to take it off because it's not reversible. So the next bad thing, I'm not a huge fan of bead blast. So if you love bead blast, then, you know, then this wouldn't, you know, be anything to you. But the bead blast is... A little, you know, like one, I know it's the, in my opinion, it's the worst kind of rust or, or it's the worst type of finish that gets rust. I'm not worried about this thing getting rust because it's M390 and M390 is very rust pre preventative, but I just don't like it because it also gets scratches really easily and stuff like that. So I'm not too fond of a bead blast. I would have loved to have seen a belt satin with like a high grit. I think that would have looked amazing. Kind of like, like this. Wouldn't that look amazing right there? Oh, that would have been so beautiful. But, you know, it's not that it's that big of a deal. There's nothing wrong with the knife in that way. That's kind of just preference. The next thing, which I do think is maybe possibly something wrong, and this is definitely um like it's i can't say that it's for sure but i'm pretty sure but i can't say for sure when i was deburring this thing sharpening it man that burr did not want to come off 
like I was really playing with it. Um, and that usually means that it might have a low HRC. I'm not saying it has a low HRC. I'm not saying that. So, so don't get it twisted, my friends, ladies and gents. I'm saying it's not a high HRC. Now, I'm not saying I had any problems with edge retention or anything like that. I did have that little nick in the blade. I don't know how much it was used before it got to me, but it was a little nick I could not get out from honing. So that's one reason why I want to put an edge on it before I send it back to the owner. But, you know, I, to me, it might have a high HRC. I just don't think it does just because of the way the burr goes. I've done so much M390, and normally when the HRC is a little bit higher, the burr just falls right off. And this one, I it, I had to play with it a little bit more than normal. Now, I really don't think that's that big of a deal on this thing. Um, but uh, but you know, it's a little thing I noticed. Other than that, though, I can't think of another bad thing. All the grind lines, everything is just beautifully done. Everything is so even. I mean beautiful blade this thing is so even and just everything lines up so perfectly and centered and this thing is done incredibly 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 well custom knife factory does amazing amazing work um better than react far better than react i mean i don't know about far better but better than react they're, they're definitely a great company and they do great work they don't do huge batches of anything, not that I know of at least. I'm pretty sure they just do small batches like you see how it's numbered. And then in the box, they send you extra parts and everything else. So they really uh, go out of their way to make an incredible product and send you an incredible product. And then by sending you extra parts and everything, it makes it to where you're not going to have to send it back to them for anything. You usually have everything to work on the knife with you. That's the video, guys. Thank you, everybody, and thanks, Bud, for sending this to me, among a lot of other amazing knives, and for all the knives you gifted us. We love all you guys. Peace.